international students are being punished unnecessarily for things that is not any fault of theirs. <laughs> beautiful people welcome back to the canada info channel my name is wolo i am a regulated canadian immigration consultant i talk about life in canada immigrating to canada and everything that has to do with canada if you're new to this channel please subscribe to my old subscribers i would say thank you for sticking with me and being loyal today's video has been overtaken by events i was supposed to talk about something else but because of the recent announcement i said i have to talk about the announcement today as well so of course, RCC has thrown another punch again. They keep throwing punches. I don't know why. I don't know why. Oh, what is it? Haven't you, you done, done enough? Haven't you done enough? I said, what? Haven't <laughs> you done enough? The pain, the torture. I mean, RCC, haven't you done enough? They've thrown another punch at international students, which is sad. I feel sad about it because i feel that international students are being punished unnecessarily for things that is not any fault of theirs so the recent announcement i'm going to be reading from my screen they said they will be reducing the intake cap on international student study permits for 2025 based on a 10 percent reduction from the 2024 target of 485,000 new study permits issued and then stabilizing the intake cap for 2026 such that the number of study permits issued remains the same as 2025. So for 2025, this means reducing the study permits issued to 437,000 people. Now, initially, they put a cap. The cap was actually for people attending colleges. It was not affecting people who would attend um universities for a master's program and people doing professional programs they put a cap on that they have put a permanent cap i would like to say permanent cap well they said they gave a figure 437,000 people only for international students in canada and this is what i feel they are punishing international students because it's my own opinion you can have your own opinion because there has been an influx of asylum seekers and once the number of asylum seekers increase, automatically they have to look for where they can reduce the numbers. Because they cannot reduce the numbers for asylum seekers. Because, I mean, Canada belongs to the United Nations Convention on Human uh, Refugees and all of that. So, Canada do not have control over the number of asylum seekers that they can take. They don't have control over that. They only have control over refugees that are outside Canada that they can bring in. But asylum seekers that come into Canada and claim asylum at the port of entry, they don't have control over that number. But they have control over international students. So whenever the number of asylum seekers increase, the best place where they feel they can cut the number of temporary residents from is international students. And I feel sad because they are making a mistake. International students are actually investing canadian dollars into the economy and i don't think that international students should be punished for um the influx of asylum seekers instead they could just reduce the number of visiting visas that they have been given and it actually started with the mexicans you know um when they gave the mexicans opportunity to apply or to come into canada without visa a lot of Mexicans came into Canada and started claiming asylum. As in the highest, the number of Mexicans that claimed asylum between 2021 and 2023 was astronomical. So they now had to introduce visa requirements again to Mexicans. You know, and now international students are being punished because of that. It's my own opinion. Please, you can have your own opinion, but this is my own opinion. I feel that international students should not be punished because international students are paying to come and study. They are not a burden to the economy. Instead, they are even bringing money into the economy. Asylum seekers are not bringing any money to the economy. The Canadian government has earmarked $1 billion for asylum seekers. You can hear me. And I'll put the video where the Minister of Immigration said so. Uh, are looking at models whereby provinces, where they stand up, would say, hey, we'll take some asylum seekers. They can contribute to the economy. Uh, they'll get compensation 
federal government, as per our last budget cycle, has put a billion dollars on the table. He, they have, he have marked one billion dollars for asylum seekers. Is that it's Canada that is even spending money on asylum seekers, whereas international students are the ones bringing in money? Make it make sense. I mean, make it make sense. Does it make sense? It doesn't make sense to me. But anyway, so whenever there's increase in asylum seekers, Canada will look for where to cut, and the only place they can cut from is international students. It's sad. Anyway, so that's it. I'll move on to the next one. The next one says, post-graduation work permit program this fall is to better align with immigration goals and labor market needs. So they are now saying that postgraduate work permit will now be aligned with immigration goals, meaning you cannot just come and study any program in Canada. You have to be very strategic about the program you start, come to study. So you have to choose a program that is in demand. If you come and study any program that is not in demand, the chances of you getting a postgraduate work permit is very, very slim. So they want to align postgraduate work permit now with occupations that are in demand. So the third one is limiting work permit eligibility later this year to spouses of master's degree students to only those whose program is at least 16 months in duration. Now, uh, there are some schools that offer master's program for one year. So they are saying that if you're coming for a one year master's program, um, your spouse will not be eligible for spousal over work permit. You have to be coming for a master's program that is 16 months and above for you to be able to apply for spouse or open work permit along with your spouse. So that's another one. Then the third one, limiting work permit eligibility later this year to spouses of foreign workers in management or professional occupations or in sectors with labor shortages under Canada's work permit program. So the final one, if your spouse is in Canada and not working in a managerial position or a high level position, it means that you will not be eligible to apply for spouse or open work permit. That is what they have said as well. Then there's another one that they also said that um, international students will now be required to write IELTS exam before they apply for postgraduate work permit. And if you finish from a university, your IELTS score should be at least a band 7. If you finish from a college, your IELTS language score should be a band 5. I, I don't have a problem with this particular one because, I mean, at the end of the day, the international students will still need to write the IELTS or CELPIP or French equivalent or whatever to qualify for permanent residence. So, you see... Those students, or if the intended students who have been asking me questions whether, okay, I studied in the UK, do I still need to write IELTS? You can see now that Canada is now imposing um, language requirements before you can even apply for postgraduate work permit. The publication also went on to say, like many countries, Canada is experiencing more asylum claims as the number of displaced people worldwide continues to grow, and that contributes to growing temporary resident volumes. You see what I initially said that, I mean, international students are being punished anytime asylum claimant numbers increase. Um, to align with our humanitarian responsibilities, the government has been working on several measures to address integrity issues and strengthen, in, strengthen the in-Canada asylum system, including implementing a partial visa requirements for Mexican nationals, improving claims processing while maintaining the fairness and integrity of the asylum system as announced in 2024, reviewing visa decision making so that our highly trained officers have the right tools to detect fraud and reduce the number of non-genuine visitors, exploring more measures to further strengthen visa integrity. And you, could, you can recall in one of my videos, I mentioned that there will be a high visa refusal rate, a high visitor visa refusal rate will start happening. Um, that is just another measure to reduce the number of people that can come into Canada to start claiming asylum. That's what I said in my last video. And it's just too much. Like, IRCC, take a break. It's just too much. It's too much for these people, especially for people who are bringing in their hard currency to come and, you know, study in Canada. At the end of the day, the money is going into your coffers, not even back to their pockets. So, I mean, take a break. Take a chill pill on these people, for goodness sake. You know, so I feel somehow. <laughs> anyway, so this is the information. This is the update I said I will come and share today. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If there's any updates, I will also come and share it as well. I'm thinking of even doing a live, um, a YouTube live session 
I don't know, it's based on a lot of things. I feel like I should be doing a YouTube live session for people, but I will look at my schedule. If there is time for that, then I'll be doing a YouTube live and taking questions um, from any international student that need answers. And that reminds me, please, I still hold consultations. If you are, if you are confused on how you can get your status, book a consultation on my website. I will discuss on how we can uh, map out a strategy for you to become a permanent resident in Canada. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye-bye. So far and wide we stand on God Our home and our native in God we will trust Be the glowing that we receive the rise Oh Canada, oh Canada, oh Canada, oh Canada, oh Canada, come together, oh Canada, oh Canada.